Do you remember an actor named Charles Nelson Riley? The name sounds familiar. I don't know who it is, though. Mm -hmm. Never heard of him. Charles Nelson Riley. Yeah. He had a great, very distinctive laugh. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote Blaine. And I said yes now. Okay. Oh, wow. That era, it wasn't cool to be like, oh. boing, but um, he did it. Uh, is he still alive? He's still going in! It's true, I'll be pushing my wagon. Then a woman will see me and go, oh, I thought you were dead. Get rid of me! Well, it's that kind of show. <laughs> the first things I remember when I was young, my mother used to yell out the window. Pollocks, get away from that boy! My father had to be institutionalized. My Aunt Lillian volunteered for this new operation. It was called a lobotomy. And every night we'd have dinner, and I would sit between my comatose father and my lobotomized aunt. Well, Eugene O'Neill would never even get near this family. In the fourth grade, something wonderful happened. I got the lead in the school play! <laughs> the voice in my head said, you're awfully good in this. I said it like Meryl Streep watching the rushes of Sophie's Choice. <laughs> 29-year-old Uta Hagen was teaching at the school. And this is the roll call. Robert Cull, Frank Langella, Steve McQueen, Hal Holbrook, Jack Lemon, Geraldine Page, Jason Robards, and all of them couldn't act for I was there! Mr. Reynolds decided to open a theater. And he told his father. And Bert Sr. said, if you ring one of those sissy fairies into this house, I'll shoot him dead on the rug. So I went right over. And I realized that laughter was the same in every language. And I had to learn how they made people laugh. 1954. I was told that I would never be allowed on television. And now I got to try to figure out who do you have to to get off? <laughs> I'll tell you the story of my life. <laughs>